Hello, welcome to this week's Changelog, where we go over the changes week by week on Solana. My name is Jacob, and I'm joined today by Nick. How are you doing today, Nick? I'm doing great. I'm excited for another Changelog. Let's, let's do this. Yeah, so first, getting into the changes, the first change we have is we're going to go through SIMD 110, which is exponential fee for write lock accounts. Uh, so this kind of SIMD, this proposal, what it goes through is the problem with write locks today. Uh, so a lot of people are sending transactions that are locking accounts that basically with a write lock so they can't be parallelized in a block, um, reducing the amount of transactions you can do over a specific program. So for example, if you're transacting on, I don't know, Jupiter or something, and you're write locking a whole bunch of accounts, it keeps out other people from also being included in that block, uh, slowing down TPS, all sorts of stuff. Um, so this is kind of like, adding a proposal for adding a fee for write locking those accounts. So if you have an account write locked over like the past X amount of blocks, um, the fee for continuing to write lock that account will increase. Um, it's a proposal. It, uh, so if you have any uh, comments to talk about this proposal, feel free to leave them on Sim, the SIMD repo on SIMD 110. Uh, what do you think about this, Nick? I think it's a really cool idea. I think uh, I'm personally for something of this kind of vein of write locking or having a fee on write lock accounts because, because like you said, it, it definitely affects transaction speed and and how many transactions can actually get put into a block in some ways. So I think if uh, if something like this was to exist, then I think it would be good for the network. Yeah, would probably be good for the network. Uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of opinions on this one proposal though, because like. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of different things you could do to make transaction inclusion even better on Solana. One of these is the exponential fee for write lock accounts. Another one is like getting better fees on rent or not rent, but like storage on the network, dynamic storage fees. That's another SIMD. Um, and then like there's also a lot of work being done on the scheduler to just make that easier and less jittery so that you can understand what else could actually make uh, the transaction inclusion better. Yeah, we actually have a commit for that for this week. There was a commit on uh, specifically the transaction state. So with this commit, it will allow transactions to actually track the cost and the fees that were put into them. So that way the scheduler can better detect how much compute usage is actually being used and re- versus requested. And so hopefully we can get more transactions actually packed into a block too. Yeah, for those that don't know, there's compute unit usage caps on blocks. So if you hit that cap, it's over. And if people request too much for their transaction and hits that cap, it could have been a better block, basically. Um, So that's exactly what this commit's doing. Another one of the projects that is coming up um, is that this is a funny little project. I appreciate this name. (laughs) Yes, the Dubious Dependency Removal Project. Uh, So Solana Labs, uh, they're... Their validator client, what they're trying to do is they're trying to remove the different dependencies that are tied to the monorepo to have less kind of like a less attack service if any of these dependencies have issues. Um, so things like percentage or FS error, uh, they're going through removing them. On the Fire Dancer side, they basically vendor all their dependencies uh, to avoid any type of issue in the future. So it's a good project to see. Uh, I'm looking forward to this filling up with de- removing overall dependencies on the mono repo. Yeah, it'll be great. Hopefully, it'll both speed up build times, you know, remove some surface area for attacks, and then hopefully help with all of the some of the uh, assorted dependency issues that people have been having. Like maybe you know you have a runtime dependency versus a build dependency; they're not necessarily noted the the same. So hopefully, that'll be another improvement in here. And then moving on, is there anything else you saw this week, Nick? Yeah, there's this interesting uh, commit on uh, updating or fixing a bug within the JSON parse on simulate transactions. If you didn't know, the JSON parse would actually not parse token accounts during simulate transactions. So the transaction simulation vice the actual transaction that would get landed, those would actually differ a little bit because of this bug. So hopefully with this bug fix, that uh, transaction simulation data, the, the data that gets responded that gets returned from the RPC during simulation will be more aligned with the actual transaction data you get when you actually land it. That's awesome. So it's kind of like specifically for token accounts, right? For this one? Yeah, specifically for token accounts on this one. Okay, that's awesome. Good to have a better uh, results from the simulate transaction RPC call. 
yeah, simulate transactions are super important. It's it's one of the ways that wallets do uh, do some security checks and, and integrity checks and try to prote- protect their users. So this is going to be something that's going to be really, really useful for the ecosystem. Cool. And then finally, we have our resource of the week. We're going to revisit what is Solana Playground. Uh, so Solana Playground, for those that are, n- are new to the Solana ecosystem, is basically a quick e- IDE for you to build Solana programs within your browser. Um, but not only this, this is something I found out that people didn't really know about. Yeah, this is um, so cool. Yeah, you can actually test your instructions from your program directly from the browser without writing any code. So for example, this is just a counter program. We can just do this with a, basically I can use my initialize and you can just hit that test button and it passes without me writing any code. Normally, you'd have to write all this code basically here to get it working and sending the transaction and making sure that you're actually initializing. Now you can just go over here, hit the little button, um, fill out your accounts and you're good to go. Um, So that's our resource of the week. Definitely try it out. Um, Play around with the test if you don't, if you haven't already, uh, because it might make your testing life cycle on Solana programs a lot better. Yeah. Always, always a fan of playground. But I guess that's going to wrap it up for this week. Thanks for joining us on the Changelog, and we'll see you next time. All right. Thank you all. <laughs>